BNB and Jasmine coin are about to crash, but VeChain is about to rocket in the coming weeks and months. And today we're going to go into the detail of the technical reasons why. Because if you can understand that crypto is difficult, but technical analysis is simple and it cuts through the noise. And I'm going to share some key insights with you. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jagir Singh. I've been trading the markets for 18 years now, formerly a math teacher, turned trader, turned entrepreneur. And I just help busy individuals trade full time to supplement, replace and double their income. Featured in the best selling book, High Probability Trading Strategies back in 2008. What we're looking at now is a daily chart of the BNB Binance coin. And I'm going to draw on the technical analysis in just a moment. And I want to talk you through what you want to be looking for all of the time. What you want to understand is that the market is driven by buying and selling behavior. The crowd is literally psychology. And we're looking for fives and threes. And where in the market cycle are they in the fives and the threes? So we can see some lines on the chart, but we want to look at, is there a five wave pattern over here? Is there a correction over here? Is this breaking down to a five wave structure? And does that give us a clue? So I'm going to detail a technical analysis approach called Elliott Wave Theory combined with Fibonacci price. I'm going to speed it up so you don't have to watch me do it. And then I'm going to talk you through why BNB is likely to crash. When I say crash, it's more of a correction. A pullback is due. Profit taking is due. But after a correction like this, we're due for another one in the very near future, then the market will probably continue. So let me draw on the TA and then I'll talk you through exactly what you want to be looking for and the price points in particular. <laughs> All right, so we've just drawn on the technical analysis for BNB, really focused on Elliott Wave pattern and Fibonacci price zones. And we're looking for end of wave five price zones. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute and why we're due for a correction. And we can look at what type of correction we're likely to have. And we're also going to look at momentum as well. So the first thing in the blue is I've done a macro wave count. We've had this impulsive move up. Impulsive mean like nice buying coming into the market on the upside. We've had this long drawn out what's called a complex correction, which is natural and normal for all markets. So this is referred to as a correction. And then we've had this powerful buying coming into the market. And what we want to see is when we look at this wave one, we do a projection from wave two. And this typical buying and selling behavior and a typical price projection for a wave three is 1.618 and an overextended wave three is 2.618. That's what this green line is. And we can see we're at that number right now. So we're at that overextended range. So we want to be on high alert. That's why I've drawn this blue three over here with a question mark saying that we're in the price zone for a typical wave three. But wave three is typically break down to a five wave structure. And that's what I've drawn in green over here. A one, two, what looks like to be a potential four, three, four, and then we're probably making a final five. So this is why we want to be on high alert that BNB is in a position. It doesn't mean it's not going to move higher. It just means we want to be on high alert that we're at some price extremes. So if it does reach $800, $900, that's not the best time to necessarily be buying. It's actually getting ready. You should be getting ready for selling or, or getting ready to take profits because especially if this breaks down to a five wave structure, we call it a wave five of a five of a three in the price zone, especially if the momentum, I've got some high level, higher time frame momentum, it's currently it's bullish. So it's indicating over the coming weeks, we should still be overall on the upside. But when this turns red, when the momentum on the weekly charts turn red, then we wanna get ready for selling coming into the market. So what I wanna cover with you is what type of selling? What do we mean by a crash? You know, crash is a strong word but it's more of a correction. So when we see a correction like this, a wave two, we're due for a wave four. So when a wave three is complete, we're due for a bigger correction that will probably come back into this range over here. So we're talking about a $500, $400 range thereabouts with BNB. So hopefully that's made sense where you can look at the charts and go, okay, where can I take profit? Let's not buy right now. Even if it does get to eight, $900, the upside is fairly limited. Let's wait for a clean pullback and then get back into the market. One of the biggest challenges I have right now is I get a lot of requests to do different coins and I only literally do one, two videos, maybe three videos a week. So if you want to learn how to do this for yourself, I've actually created a free training 
that's in the link below. It's going to cover the five big mistakes most people, most traders make and leave money on the table, not taking profits. And it really does apply to crypto bull markets. That's one of the hardest skills. So that's in the link below. Do check it out. It'll be a game changer for you because I'll share some key insights. So now let's dive into coin number two, which is Jasmine coin, which is also due to crash. If you want to maximize your profits, you need to do the opposite of the crowd. So we're looking at Jasmine coin and obviously we've got some nice big movements to the upside. We're going to pour on the technical analysis in just a moment so we can read where's the market in terms of fives and threes and what kind of crash or correction are we looking for before we can load up again. So be aware that what you feel that you should be doing, you more often than not should do the opposite. So right now the market is flying. So you may have felt you should have bought in more over here and over here, and you might be tempted to buy more, more over here. But actually, you should be doing the opposite, which is looking to lock in profits. And then when the market is pulling back and you might be, you know, regretting buying over here, this is time to buy it as well. So let's pour on the technical analysis, fives and threes in the Elliott Wave, and we can really look at what position is the market in, what is it very likely to do with 70 to 90 percent accuracy, and what will be the signals that tell you that is indeed the case. I've drawn on the technical analysis in terms of fives and threes. We're doing two degrees of wave counts because there's psychology within the psychology. So what we mean that by that is we've got this nice impulsive move called that a wave one. We've had this long drawn out complex correction. And then we've had this, what looks to be a one, two, a massive three, four, and an overextended wave five. So we are looking like we're reaching that typical maximum wave three zone is, is really overextended. So when the market overextends, it's likely to have a deep correction, a deep crash. That's why we use the word crash. It's gonna have a pullback more than likely. So what are the clues? So the big thing right now that we wanna be aware of is that the weekly momentum is still bullish right now, indicating the next few weeks, we're probably still gonna see further upside movement. So the key thing you wanna be looking for, like really get your blinkers on and open for this, is a one, two, this looks like an overextended three. We're looking for a four of some sort, and then a final wave five. We call that a wave five, a five of a three. If you get a five wave structure, and then the price comes back down and closes below a swing low, or even just overlaps back into this range over here, these are early clues that this immediate trend is over and then we're probably gonna get a pullback. We are due for a correction. And it's probably gonna be a big one. Why? Because this is pretty explosive to the upside, pretty explosive to the upside, and the wave fours are a profit-taking wave. And the typical wave four behavior is that it usually comes back into the range of the lower degree wave four. What I mean by that is this is a lower degree wave four in the green, and the wave four in the blue is likely to be a sharp pullback back into this range, which is gonna be fairly significant. So now is the time to start thinking about profits. If you're in good profits with Jasmine Coin right now, we've had some amazing moves to the upside, is now to go, where can I take logical profits? I like to have stop losses and trailing stop losses, even if it's psychological stop losses. If there's swing lows, we've got a swing low over here. This has been overextended, so I would look to exit some of my position in a logical manner over here. But if you do get a pullback and we get one more high, you don't wanna have your stop loss any further than this point and then find a way of just trailing it until the market stops you out. And then we're more than likely gonna see a movement to the downside. And another clue that you wanna look for is overbalance of price and the structure. What I mean by that is, how deep was this pullback? How deep was this pullback? If you get a move that's bigger than either of those two, that's an early signal. And if the structure of the first move to the downside becomes impulsive, in other words, it's like a five-way structure like that, that's also an early signal and an early clue that you want to be looking out for that will tell you a wave three top is likely in and that we're probably going to get a pullback back into this range. And if it does get back into this range, that's where you want to maybe be considering buying back into the market for the next wave five on the upside. We're now going to dive into VeChain on why it's looking to explode to the upside. It's going to rock it more than likely. But before I do, I forgot to mention one of the key systems that you need is a system to identify buying and selling behavior. And I actually cover it in the free training, which is in the description link below. Do check it out. It's an absolute game changer. I really share some key insights. So with that said, let's now dive into VeChain. I have a question for you. 
can you think about this chart and look at fives and threes? So we're looking at VeChain on the daily chart. Can you spot any obvious fives and threes? And if you can, it also tells us what's likely to occur next. The other question you want to ask is, is it looking impulsive or corrective? So we're going to look at the immediate price action in just a moment. I'm going to draw on the technical analysis. And we always want to ask the question, is the market structure impulsive or is there an overlapping structure, overlapping waves and looking corrective? If we can identify that, it gives us big clues on how the market sentiment is, how the crowd is feeling about VeChain. That means all the fundamentals are already baked in. So you don't need to read the news and see what's happening and be in you know, up to date with the project itself might be helpful, but from a technical perspective, if you're looking to make money, we can really rely heavily on the technical factors because everything is baked into the price. So let me draw on the TA and then we'll break down VeChain where it's likely in its fives and threes model. Where is it in the Ellie Wave pattern and what's likely to occur next? Did you get the same wave count as me? Maybe, maybe not, but look, everything in life is difficult before it's easy. That's just the name of the game, but beneath every success is the mountain of necessary failure. That's just the learnings. So let's just focus on the blue wave count initially. What I'm seeing over here from my 18 years of experience is that we've got this initial wave one. We've had this long drawn out correction and we've had this nice in green, a one, two, three, four, five, typical of a wave three, nice and impulsive. And this wave structure looks overlapping. It's a nice overlapping wave structure. I did a video on VeChain not that long ago. It might be worth checking it out. And we anticipated this. We anticipated a wave four correction. And now we're in that typical price and time zone. And we're looking for the end of that correction. So there's two things that I want to highlight to you. So with Elliott Wave Theory, there's rules and guidelines. Rules are hard in terms of these are the three key rules. And guidelines are, it ha happens more often than not. And we're going to utilize both of them right now. So one of the key things with Elliott Wave is wave fours should not and cannot go back into the range or the closing range of wave one. So we go, okay, that qualifies. Wave three is usually the longest, but never the shortest, that qualifies. And wave two does not go beyond the beginning of wave one, so that qualifies. So everything looks good from that perspective. So there are three early wave rules. From a guideline perspective, most macro wave fours fall into the range of the lower degree wave four. you get? Come again? What? All right, so the lower degree wave four, if I just draw it in green over here actually, Let's just draw it in green. This lower degree wave four, one, two, three, four, this zone here, and the higher degree wave four, which is A, B, C of this wave four, falls into the range. And we can see we're currently in that range. So not are we not only in the time and price zone, we're also in the range of the former lower degree wave four zone, and the weekly momentum is bullish. So we've got multiple factors telling us we are due for VeChain to rocket. Now, how do you know when it's going to rocket? So you've got a few different options over here. So if you're trading VeChain versus investing in VeChain, a bit different. So, you know, we're in that range. You just buy and hold and it might go a bit lower, a bit higher before it takes off. But it's more than likely looking at the price structure going to take off. And what we're anticipating is that the price is going to go above 0 0.055 probably 0 0.06, 0 0.07. There's particular price targets. I'll actually cover the price targets in just a moment of VeChain end of wave five price targets if this is at the end. So the clues that the wave four is complete, there's two real ones you want to be looking at. The obvious one, which is a bit further down the line, is if the price goes above this high. That's quite far away from the market. So an earlier signal is if the price goes above this high. This is a stronger signal, but this is an earlier signal. Right, so we want to be aware of that. So we're talking about 0 0.037. If it goes above that point, it's more than likely complete. Another clue is if we do get an initial move up, is it an impulsive structure, like a five-wave structure, or is it overlapping? If it's overlapping, we're probably going to get another low. If it's impulsive, we've probably seen the bottom is in. That's another clue on buying and selling psychology. And you always want to be utilizing this. So this is like an overlapping wave structure and then it followed through. And if we look at this, this is an impulsive wave structure. Um, so that's what you want to be always looking at as well. So let's finish with VeChain with the price targets. If this wave four is in, which is in a position to be in, but we want confirmation, the two typical price zones are 0 0.06 to 0 0.068 with VeChain. If you want to learn Elliott Wave Theory, which is one of the most powerful things I've ever come across, 
check out the best Elliott Wave guide, beginner's guide, that's gonna really break everything down. Until then, I'll see you next time.